It was a dark and stormy night. Iris's parents just left to attend the Halloween town meeting. It was gloomy. There was nothing to do in the old rickety house. So, Iris sat on the lavender couch set in the middle of the lightly lit living room, staring out the window until she heard a slight creak of a door. She looked over smoothly to listen again, but there was no sound. She turned back to the window. A few minutes passed, and she got bored watching the rain slowly drop to the floor. Iris began to wander around the living room. She thought to herself how easy it is to notice details once you actually have the time to. The sound of the grandfather clock chimed gently in the background as she sat on a desk filled with stacked newspapers. She began to read the cover, curious in that moment about the latest news. Iris didn't care much for the news or new trends. To her, it was overrated. The title was big. The huge Times New Roman font stated loudly that a murderer had escaped from prison. She scoffed to herself, Whatever. Throwing the paper on the floor. How can the police officers be so stupid not to realize someone breaking out? She walked upstairs. The sound of the annoying creaks rang from the steps. Once she got upstairs, she headed towards the bathroom. Flickering the light, she stared into the mirror at her reflection. Iris played in her red dyed curly hair. She thought to herself about how different she was from the other girls at school. Her mom always told her that being different was a good thing and to cherish that power. It might come in handy. Her thoughts were interrupted with footsteps running across the hallway. Her face broke into shock, and she accidentally bumped into the bathroom vanity. The hairspray and the bathroom necessities all fell to the floor. She looked quickly out the bathroom doorway. What the hell was that? She thought to herself. She waited to see any movement in the dark or other alerting sounds. There was nothing. She walked out of the bathroom, turning on the hallway lights to look around and saw nothing. Her breath and heart unsteady, she tried to calm herself, breathing in and out a bit. She began feeling like a person was watching her. She turned and she found a shadowy figure that almost looked like it could be a person, but as she blinked, the figure was gone. She began to rub her head, thinking that it was all just a mental thing. She makes her way into the kitchen to grab a cold bottle of water. As she opens the refrigerator, a man grabs her by her neck and begins to start strangling her. Iris grabs the water bottle from the already open fridge and pokes the man in the eye, gets loose and then makes a run for her bedroom. But before she makes her way to the room, she turns back and looks at the individual. His face looked awfully familiar. Then it clicked with her. It was him, the guy who escaped from prison. She quickly closed the door as she heard him screaming in pain after being poked in the eye with the bottle. She ran to her bed to grab her phone, only to realize that her phone was still on the kitchen table. Oh my god, why is this happening to me? She started to panic, grabbing her hair, thinking of a plan as she looked around her room. Weapon. I need a weapon. She thought to herself what she can use, and just then she heard loud footsteps booming up the steps. She ran to the door and locked it as quickly as possible. Iris turned around to notice an old wooden brush given to her by her grandmother. The brush was thick and bulky. She patted it in her hand. This will do. In that same second, she jumped to the noise of banging on the door. Boom! 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 The sound got louder with every hit of the door. She backed away, thinking of a way to escape. The banging got louder. She noticed the doorknob slowly twisting while the banging continued. Iris could feel a drop of sweat sliding down her forehead. She turned toward her window. The dark sky was staring back at her almost like an evil spirit laughing at her attempt to stay alive. The door banged open. Iris turned around while letting out a sudden gasp. There he was, standing in the doorway. For a second, it was quiet. A nervousness came across Iris, making her knees go numb. The man charged towards her, jumping over the bed. She screamed and moved toward the walk-in closet. He followed her. Iris hid behind a row of long jackets and coats that linked all the way to the floor. Stay quiet, she thought, holding her mouth in the brush in the other hand. He creeped through the closet. Quiet footsteps sounded louder with every step he took. He was getting closer. He started to bang on the racks with other clothes to see if Iris was hiding there. He found nothing. Iris held her breath as he stepped right in front of her. She stood, still as possible. A few moments passed. The man yanked Iris out of her hiding spot. Ah! Iris screamed. The man held her arm and held up a silver knife. Look what I got from the kitchen. He said in a raspy voice. Iris felt a tear overflowing in her eyes. She was not going to die today. She kicked him in every man's weak spot. As he stumbled back, she took the wooden brush and smacked it against his face. He fell to the floor with a grunt. Iris ran out of the other side of the walk-in closet. She headed towards the kitchen, running downstairs, skipping steps. Go, go, go. Iris reached for her phone and grabbed it hectically. Dialing 911, she opened the cabinet under the sink and grabbed the butcher knife. 
Her mother only used it when cutting steak, but this seemed like an appropriate time to use it for something else. Iris waited for the phone to ring. She glanced up to the steps to see if the man was coming down. 911, what's your emergency? They answered. Hello? I need help. A murderer. He escaped from prison. He's here with me. Okay, tell me your address. I'm sending over a 14 now. Okay, please hurry. I have a knife and I'll use it if I need to. Wait, try not to hurt. Iris hung up. She didn't have time to listen to someone telling her how to stay alive the right way. There was no right way to live. If she needed to stab him, it was going to be done. She heard the man stumbling down the steps. She set her phone down on the counter. She didn't want him to know that she called the cops.